In June, it'll be 50 years since 11 people died in a fire at the old Henderson's department store in Liverpool city centre. The fire helped to change British law. Well, we've unearthed some unseen footage of the fire and managed to reunite two of the bravest men on that fateful day for the first time in half a century. This is the first time this footage has ever been broadcast. It's June 1960 and Henderson's, a prestigious department store in the centre of Liverpool, is ablaze. I'll never forget it. Obviously I'm 74 years old now and yet it's as clear to me today as it was then. Eleven people lost their lives. In all respects, it was the one fire, I think, in post-war fire in Liverpool that virtually everybody remembers who was alive that day, where they were, and remembers the Henderson's uh, incident. It really got, did get into the psyche of the people of Merseyside. The impact was so great that it didn't just scar a city, but led to changes in the law. It was um, a landmark event, albeit a very tragic event, and it gave rise to uh, changes in legislation that, that made premises that, that public access are safer. It may be 50 years ago, but the memories are still crystal clear for George Taylor. He was the fireman who scaled a 100-foot ladder to carry out a brave rescue. As George was climbing, one man fell past to his death. When I arrived at the scene, uh, there was quite a lot of smoke and flame coming out of the building, and the people were actually trapped on the ledge on the fourth floor. And I fortunately had a buckle on, my, on a belt with a hook, which secures you to the ladder. And because I had the belt on, I was able to get up the ladder and get the people off the ledge from the fourth floor. But unfortunately, uh, one chap who was to the left of the ladder, uh, he was, I think he was pushed off by the heat and the pressure of the smoke from within the building and he fell down to the canopy. A huge crowd gathered outside the store. Henderson's was a high-class department store and had just been sold by Harrods to the house of Fraser. It was packed with shoppers. It was a very hot day, and the doors inside were wedged open to allow fresh air in, which only helped the fire to spread. About 20 past two, uh, on the third floor, um, a crackling noise was heard. It was realised this was a fire, and they started trying to play fire extinguishers onto it. Um, they only had two or three extinguishers on each floor. If I tell you that they used nine of them, you can see there were people running from all over the store. But what they didn't do was evacuate the store, operate the fire alarm, or call the fire brigade. They tried to fight the fire themselves for about five minutes, and those five minutes were crucial. Here is a turntable ladder, a 100-foot ladder, and there, going up the ladder, is George. Simon's collected a huge archive of pictures and reports about the fire. It's a combination, as with all disasters, of the, the construction of the building, the fact it was old, the fact that Nobody really thought it was going to happen to them. But when the fire happened, because there weren't a, a, a series of practices or fire drills that had gone on, evacuation wasn't put into place. The fire brigade weren't called immediately. People did what they thought was the right thing, try and fight the fire. This is the report written by Thomas Kelly, who was the chief fire officer at the time of the Henderson's fire. It includes reports from the local papers. And this is an account of how a 15-year-old cashier and her friends were rescued. It says... They had been serving customers, ringing up cash on the tills, chatting gaily. Then suddenly, they noticed the smell of smoke. Customers started to walk out. Girls put the cash from their tills into tins and then tried to get to safety. Some walked down the stairs, others were faced with a wall of smoke. There was a dread sensation of burning heat. The girls kept their heads. Some crawled to safety on the roof of an adjoining building. Others were rescued by firemen. We managed to track down the man who helped to rescue those girls. Peter Smith was 18 and working in the store. Well, I do remember it was a high-class store. Uh, and I, when I first started there, you had to work other departments before you went, went on to a main selling job. I worked on the lifts, the loading bay. Uh, I worked in the restaurants, all as a part of learning to work with people. Sadly for Peter, a horse riding accident since has robbed him of much of his memory. But when he reads his own written evidence from the fire inquiry, it shows that despite being precariously balanced on a window ledge 100 feet up, he bravely battled in vain to get other women out. And got hold of both her hands and tried to pull her out. 
uh, of the store. She was screaming and seemed to have lost all control of herself. And then the result was that I was unable to pull her up by myself. You'd got people out onto the ledge. Yes. And this lady you were trying to pull up, as you say, the windows were sort of three to five feet from floor level. Yes. But it may well have been that somebody else was, was clinging onto well, her as that, well. I think that was the case. Um, the weight alone pulling somebody out would have been quite, uh, quite well, hard to do. Peter was honoured by the Queen for his actions. And we have our own plan to pay tribute by reuniting him with another of that day's heroes someone he hasn't seen in half a century. How do you think it will feel to actually meet a man you haven't seen for 50 years? Oh, quite, uh, well, delightful. Henderson's was eventually rebuilt and continued to trade, but no one was ever prosecuted, despite a lengthy inquiry. It did come down to a definite electrical fault, but actually who did it? Nobody was ever prosecuted, and um, you know, the 11 people who lost the, their, their, their lives in the fire got very little in the way of any compensation from anybody. Um, the building was, in fact, completely destroyed, and the amount of evidence that the fire brigade were able to, to assimilate was, in some respects, compromised by that. This is Church Street today, on the spot where Henderson's once stood. Busy shoppers are oblivious to what once happened. But where would the ledge have been? Where they well, were... roughly, as I told you, um, where that panel is there, right. about that height. And it was no more than that wide. Joe Sugar won't forget. He worked at Henderson's as a lift boy and chauffeur. He too could so easily have become one of the fire's victims. I was lucky because I was going to try and get to this fire because I was on the firefighting squad. And I took about four paces in. It was thick smoke. And it was pitch black, obviously all the lights had gone out. And with all the fixtures being fitted to the window, there was very little natural light there. And I, I realised if I'd have gone any further, I would have been trapped. And I turned round and came back and went down the escalator. That's how lucky I was, and I thank God for that. It's the day of the reunion. We how brought Peter to Merseyside Fire and Rescue headquarters. Well, He's about to come face okay. to face with someone he last saw through choking flames and smoke. Right. This is George. Peter? Never met you before, George. I know. You don't want to meet me again either. <laughs> How, How lovely are you? To, I'm very well and Glad lovely to, to it's see you. Honor. I know. 50 years. I know. Last time was on the bottom of a ladder. That's it. When you got off the bottom, I never saw you after that. <laughs> lovely to see you, Peter. Thanks very lovely much. to see you. Likewise. Really great stuff. Reuniting George and Peter Did gave the fire service chance to reflect and remember. It's great to be able to meet Peter and George today. Henderson's, it's 50 years ago and um, I think it's right to remember for all the right reasons uh, that tragic day. Um, but not to forget how far we've come as a fire and rescue service, you know. It bears no resemblance really now as it looks uh, to what it was then. But in the, at the end of the day, we're still here to do exactly the same job that George did all of those years ago. And then there's one more amazing you. surprise. Oh, thank you. Well, there we are, Peter. Can you remember where you are? There you are. Never realised it was so well, high up. Yeah, you are. You Is got, that me? That's you. The two ladies are here. And then there's another kind of contractor, I think he was, came down. And there's myself going down the ladder after being at the top of it. Good God. On this ledge, that was the position where we got you off. How the years roll by. Mm. Never mind, I'll see you again in another, what, 20 years? Well, well I hope so, if not before. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's it for tonight and for this series of Inside Out Northwest. Don't forget you can catch this programme again via the BBC iPlayer. And I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>